All right, this video is going to be talking about how I went about my AC and DC electrical system in my new trailer for RC events and camping. So what I basically did is I kind of drew some diagrams of uh, what I wanted to do. So when I'm camping or doing an RC event, I needed ways of generating AC voltage. So you can obviously, if you're camping, go to a campsite that has electric site, the 30 amp or 50 amp outlets, and you just plug a cable into their box and then into your trailer. The other option is to generate your uh, power from solar panels. So I first bought the Harbor Freight solar panel, the four panel system for 100 watts. And uh, then later on this year, I bought a champion generator from Tractor Supply that also has a AC inverter on the front panel. So it automatically converts the power to a, a AC output. So the electrical diagram of my trailer is fairly simple. Um, once I get to the site, the blue dot is my external plug 30 amp on the side of the trailer. And I can either plug that into a 30 amp shore power, such as a, in camping, or I can uh, plug it into the generator and this is a 2000 watt generator so it can generate about 20 amps of power. Then that AC voltage goes inside the trailer and into a breaker box. So this is just a two circuit breaker box so the 30 amp comes in. I have it split to two 15 amp circuit breakers. And so I basically have one circuit breaker that's wired to the front outlet. It's a 15 amp circuit breaker. And then the other circuit breaker goes through a switch to the rear outlet. Now this works fine during the daytime when I'm running off electricity. But at nighttime, um, let's say if I'm boondocking and I have the generator as my main power, you don't want to run the generator all through the night because a lot of places have uh, quiet hours. So what I've done is I have an output from the AC inverter uh, that generates the voltage from the batteries going into this double pull, double throw switch. And it will allow me to at nighttime switch from AC voltage coming from the shore power to the DC power inverter. So this is a picture I snapped today of the finished result of my wiring. I need to make it a little cleaner there on the wiring harness, especially around the uh, fuse panel. But this is basically how it ended up. So let's go through this uh, step by step. So as you saw on the bottom right, I have marine batteries. There are 12 volt batteries and I have two of them running in parallel. So what it basically means is negative goes to negative, positive goes to positive and it combines the cumulative amp hours of both batteries. So it's a 12 volt system. And what I wanted to do when I recharge these batteries, I wanted to be able to switch between battery one and battery two in case one of them was a little bit lower in voltage and I wanted to kind of equalize them. So this switch actually allows me to go between battery one, battery two, or both battery one and two. Then the output of this switch goes to a bus bar, which is basically a uh, piece of metal that has a bunch of screws on there, and you can tie together a bunch of the same signal, and in this case, the positive voltage from the DC batteries. And then also tied into the bus bar is a 12 circuit breaker uh, fuse box. And at the top of the um, Fuse box is all the neutrals that are all common, but then you put your fuses in along the both the left and right side and for the different circuits. So starting with the solar panels, um, I have the four Harbor Freight solar panels totaling 100 watts, and I installed on top of the trailer a flexible solar panel that also is a 100 watts. So combined, I have them in parallel. I have a total of 200 watts that the sun can generate for me. And starting off, I used the solar charge controller that came with the Harbor Freight system. And it worked fine. Um, but then recently in doing research, I find out that these PWM, which is pulse width modulation, 
and look for videos on this because it, it gets more in depth that I don't want to do on this video. But basically, as the solar panel voltage comes into these controllers, it then will turn it down to 12 volts or up to like 14.4 for max charging of the batteries. And they work okay, but they're only about 80% efficient in relation to what's being generated by the solar panels. Uh, a lot of people are saying that the better device is to have an MPPT device. So I bought this Renogy uh, Rover system. And so now, signal flow wise, I go from the solar panels through a toggle switch and then from the switch into the charge controller. And the reason why I want the switch is that's the way I can turn this, the voltage from the solar panels on or off. And let's say if I needed to plug them in or change something out, I want to uh, turn off the voltage going into my solar charge controller so it doesn't damage anything. So the MPPT charge controller does its thing and generates a total efficiency of about 98% of the solar panel energy and converts that into a voltage that is then fed into back into the batteries. This I also have going through a simple on-off battery switch. Uh, these battery switches are what you might find in a uh, boat or marine application. And there again, too, I wanted to just have an on-off switch just for safety. And then that goes into the fuse panel. I have it going through a 20-amp fuse circuit breaker and then into the batteries. The next in the equation is the AC inverter. So with this DC system, the DC voltage comes from, again, from the, the batteries, the positive voltage, and goes through yet another on-off switch into the AC inverter. So it converts the DC voltage to an AC voltage so you can run like your microwave, your lights, or charge your cell phone, or whatever it may be. So this AC inverter allows me to run my stuff at nighttime on the batteries. Now let's say if I go to a camping ground that uh, is very uh, wooded, um, the solar panels aren't going to get much sun, so therefore it's not going to be charging up the batteries through the day. And so what I've put in line is a Harbor Freight battery charger. It does 2 amp trickle charge, 10 amp, and 50 amp emergency. So what I will do is I'll plug those alligator clips straight into the positive and negative of the marine batteries. I can charge up one or both of the batteries. I also have a battery minder, that's the brand name of this little black box, so that like when my trailer's back at my home and I just want to kind of trickle charge through the night, um, I can plug this in to the batteries and the whole, just kind of top things off, keep things at a floating voltage. And it also does a decalcification of your plates since I'm using floating batteries. The one thing the manuals will tell you is if you're using some type of charger, like I just described, you want to make sure you disconnect your AC inverter and your MPPT controller because you don't want that voltage going back through the system and harming the other electronics. So that's the reason why I have those on-off switches is when I plug in the battery charger using AC to recharge up the marine batteries, I turn the switches off for the MPPT controller and the AC inverter. And then finally, I have uh, like a DC socket, cigarette lighter, and a 12-volt uh, auto light that I have on my workbench. Uh, those are just going into the circuit panel as well. And the black lines just show you that basically the neutral or grounds of all the electronics are going into the neutral ground of the circuit breaker. This is the switch I installed to uh, switch from shore power to battery power at nighttime for the rear outlet. And then I also found these meters online, which are kind of cool because it shows you power draw, current draw, voltage, and so forth. Um, very handy to have. So I tried to make it as simple as possible. Uh, <laughs> hopefully there's not much confusion. If there is, leave it in the comments and I'll try to help you out. But as always, thanks for f watching. Happy flying!